Hello YouTube, this is Captain Darren. My call sign is N4VFR, or in phonetics, November 4, Victor Foxtrot Romeo. I have a problem here at my radio station in Jacksonville, Florida. When I'm trying to talk on HF, I get a lot of uh, electrical noise from the power lines. And I'm going to try to eliminate it using toroids. I guess they call it toroids. So let's see if this toroids uh, will help eliminate some of my RF noise. Okay, what you're looking here is 14 megahertz or the 20 meter band. You see all those spikes down there? Those are RF noise or, or uh, electromagnetic inf interference and those are from adjacent power power lines or power transformers so this is what I hear it's just a bunch of static right now I have the attenuators off and then we also have the preamp off that's 20 meters now let's go down to 40 meters 40 meters there's a signal there. Alright, so I got 20 dB attenuated with no preamp. If I'm going to turn off the attenuation. There's the static noise. I don't hear the other station. So what I normally listen to, or my... There you go, he's coming back. They're talking about the preamps. IPO is uh, no preamp. Preamp one. Yeah, on what I'll do. Let me look at my wattage here. Let me lean over here. Radio one, two, three, four. Uh, same, same as seventy-five. For twenty-five and five fifty. I'm driving it at sixty-five watts. I have to drive four more than seventy-five. But my twenty. All right, so that's what I'm experiencing now. If I want to have a QSO with this gentleman, um, he's coming in clear, so I can set it up with attenuation, 12 dB, and turn up the RF gain to, to cut some of that noise. So when he comes back to me, it's much clearer, cleaner. And that's how I have to communicate. So again, summarize, I got the attenuation at 12 dB attenuated and IPO off is the preamp is off. Okay, welcome outside here in Jacksonville, Florida. It's kind of windy, so you might hear some wind noise. Uh, this here is my radio shack room and my antenna is located right over there. That's the uh, 05 a uh, 27 foot HOA antenna, 05 antenna HF. And uh, let me show you where the power wires, where I suspect the noise is coming from. Okay, that's where my antenna is located. And we're walking down the street. We get a power line here. And we get a power line right there. I think it looks massive. I don't know what that is. I and mean, we got more up there. So I'm not sure. I suspect there's RF noise or electromagnetic interference or power line noise there or over there. Take a look at those boxes. All right, that's another shot. 
and down here a lot of utility access I don't know what this are it looks like uh, phone lines 200 volts 240 volts AC 7.5 kilowatts hmm Okay, looking again up above. Leave me a comment down below what those are. I probably need to find a way I can sniff out where the RF or the interference is coming from. And then I can call the power company to take a look. Hopefully they can replace some components. 18T underground cable. Again, that blue house is where I live there and uh, beyond those big trees is where my antenna is. Here's another angle. How far I am from those power power poles. So my antenna is located right about there. Right about there where those uh, those flowers are at. And then the power poles, there's two of them right over there. Or actually, there's three. Man, if you can smell these gardenias right now, it smells so good. All right. Hey, uh, take a look at my antenna. Since I last showed you my 05 antenna, I upgraded it. I put a uh, gauge 6 wire for ground instead of the braided um, grounding strap. Here's the feed point to the antenna. One, two, three. I got three ferrite beads. I'm not sure if I need to remove those or keep those there. What do you think? Should I put a toroid right here at the base of the antenna? Or just keep those three ferrite beads? All right, so that's what my setup is right now. It's still uh, nice and tight. All right, so the coax is underground, buried, going this direction, and then curves right back into the uh, antenna window feed-through. What do you think I should do? Should I go ahead and put uh, two ferrite beads wrapped here, right before it goes inside the radio shack? Um, that's what I was thinking about doing, putting two ferret beads here, uh, stack them up two together, and wrap the coax through as much as many times as I can, and then put another one inside the shack right before the amplifier. All right, let me show you what I've bought. This here, this stack of toroids, is the FT240 dash 31 ferrite and I purchased those 10 toroid cores from eBay and right now today's price is nine dollars and 49 cents plus you got to pay for shipping the shipping they want there is like four dollars and 20 cents and that's shipped out of Texas and um, that's who or who I bought it from that's the seller there so this is what I plan on doing. I'm going to open this package of toroids and I want to put two together. Huh. The unboxing of the toroids. So they come like this. Okay, so a lot of the toroids all look the same. So it behooves you to go ahead and write what each one is. So let's write on this one. FT240-31 there we go all right let's figure this out I got two toroids number 31 
this feed line or this coax jumper, I think it's about, uh, say about six feet. Okay, that's, this is going to be connected from my Yaesu 101 MP to the Palstar antenna tuner. So, I figure out how I can wrap this several times. That's one turn. That's two turns. Let me see if I can get three in there. Okay. You don't want to get any tighter than this because um, you may weaken the center conductor of the coax. This is pretty hard. Um, I think it's a LMR 400 cable. I don't remember. It's from DX Engineering though. I think it is LMR 400. So what I'm going to do, well, I could probably pass one more through there. Let's try it. One more loop. That's that's actually shortening my my coax feed. I might have to order more, a longer one, so that I can accomplish this. Okay, this is not easy. There it is. Just like that. One, two, three, four passes through. I'm going to zip tie these together and zip tie the the, the toroid. Alright, so this is what I've got so far. One, two, three, four. Got four, four loops inside the toroid. And this end is going to be connected to the uh, Yaesu 101 MP. And the other end will be connected to my antenna tuner. All right, well, anyways, I got the toroid uh, installed, two of them, number 31. Uh, the attenuator is off and no preamp, and these guys are still rag chewing. Can you tell me if this smells like ether? No, I, I, he did smell it, and then he fell over. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if uh, it eliminated some, but I know that it's going to probably eliminate the uh, common mode current that comes uh, back to the radio. But you can tell that there is still some power line noise. This guy is booming in strong, S9. So I can turn on the attenuator. 12 dB preamps off and increase the RF gain. Yeah, Rick was just talking um, just before you came in there earlier. Uh, he and I were talking, and he said, Well, the high fivers they're on 3908 uh, Sunday, uh, Tuesday, and Thursday. And she'll come in there and ain't it time for you to get up? I just told. <laughs> Okay, I decided to go ahead and put a toroid outside right before it goes into the antenna feed through. So this is a number 31 toroid 
and I got one, two, three, four, five turns in this 2.4 inch toroid. I've added some toroids uh, here. This is the cable for my PR40 Heil microphone. And this here is the Heil foot push to talk switch. And uh, here's a toroid for my HDMI video display that displays the Yesu 101 on the external monitor and also this here this is a a uh, keyboard light and that's a USB power cable and that's also connected to the toroid I put uh, a bundle here and a separate bundle for my HDMI because there's no more room in this one here we're looking at the back of the Yaesu 101 MP. There's the power cord at the bottom. That's also toroid along with the, the two audio cables in the back. They're back there. The two audio cables. They are also toroided around this one here. And this one is the double one that I we done earlier two toroids and that's the uh, the transmit side transmit and receive antenna number one all right so we're listening to 40 meters and we have attenuation of 12 db with no preamp I'm going to turn off the attenuation. You can hear that there's the, the what do you call that, the electrical power wires or power line noise. You can actually hear it. Even with all the toroids that I've added, it still comes through. So I need to do something else um, to counteract the electrical noise, or I can call the JEA, that's the Jacksonville Electrical Authority, um, to take a look at troubleshoot. But uh, I would think they would probably need me to find out which one it is, or they have a special tool, um, a sniffer, per se, to uh, find out which which transformer, which uh, power pole has a leak. All right, attenuation to 12 dB. Adjust the RF gain. And this is how I'm going to have to listen to it. work much but I know it does help with the uh, common moan current um, I ordered also some ferret beads I want to put some ferret beads for the for the video um, display uh, HDMI cord uh, also I want to put some around the uh, the power power supply and the power cords and tr I'm just trying to uh, eliminate all kinds of RFI within the shack but I do believe that the noise is coming from the power lines, the power lines that are outside because that's affecting a lot of my bands on HF. So please leave me a comment, um, leave me some, some direct suggestions on what I can do to improve, to reduce the uh, radio frequency interference from the power lines um, in my home shack here in uh, Jacksonville. Please consider to subscribe if you like the video, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. This is Captain Darren, N4VFR, signing off. 
73s.